Welcome in, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of Live Streamed at Silver Hall. My name is Rob Van Auken. I'm the marketing and box office manager here at the Milton and Tamar Maltz Performing Arts Center on the campus of Case Western Reserve University. Tonight we have a very special show. Uh, looking forward to it. Before the show starts, though, we do have two quick things to mention to you. Uh, the first is going to be what you're going to see on the bottom of your screen throughout the show. Uh, throughout the show, you will see the lower third of your screen pop up with information uh, about Piano Cleveland uh, and about some of the uh, songs that are being performed. Um, part of the information that is going to pop up is information about how to donate to Piano Cleveland. Uh, if you are able to, please do consider donating. One dollar, two dollars, five dollars, anything helps these performers and these organizations that have been without shows for close to six months. Uh, again, if you are able to, please do consider donating. We're also going to ask that you help out the Malt Center. All you need to do to help us out is uh, go to our website and sign up for our so er, email blast, case.edu slash malt center. Right on the front page there, uh, we send out one email a week. It's information about this series and information about other shows that we have going on. Uh, again, that is case.edu slash malt center. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at malt center. Thanks again so much for tuning in tonight. And now before the show starts, we do have a quick message from your own from Piano Cleveland. Good evening, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. We're so happy to be here. My name is Jeroen Kohlberg, and I'm president of Piano Cleveland. Maybe many of you know us as the presenters of the Cleveland International Piano Competition. The Cleveland International Piano Competition is one of the major piano competitions in America, which we're holding once every few years. Of course, for us, this has been very challenging also. We had to postpone our big competition from this summer to 2021. Instead of that, we put together an online competition called Virtualoso, which just finished last month. And we managed to raise $75,000 thanks to you and thanks to the uh, audiences here in Cleveland, nationally and internationally. We presented 30 incredible pianists uh, from around the world. Now we're also presenting different, uh, different concerts and different events, and we're so happy to be here today at the Maltz Performing Arts Center and to present our wonderful and great friend, Carolina Altmans, this wonderful pianist who's uh, has been a friend of ours for a long time. Uh, Carolina also served on the jury, on the preliminary jury of the Cleveland International Piano Competition. She performs nationally and internationally. She also teaches uh, nationally and internationally, including online now in the days of COVID. So I'm sure you are going to enjoy Carolina's performance and thank you very much for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present an evening of classical piano pieces for you today from beautiful Silver Hall here at the Maltz Performing Arts Center in Cleveland, Ohio. On the program will be a variety of classical music and I will always introduce each piece with a few thoughts about it to make the listening a little bit more fun and a little bit more relaxing and easy for you. First, piece on the program is by Franz Schubert, the Viennese composer Franz Schubert. It is a Klavierstück in E flat minor. Now Klavierstück really is just an impromptu, a little invention right there and then. And um, Schubert does in this Klavierstück what he loves doing in many of his pieces. He plays with the major and minor modes. Now this major and minor, usually we say major is reserved for happy events, outgoing things, fun. Minor events may be more introverted, a little bit more pensive, maybe a little sad. Now usually you would think happy occasions are expressed in the major mode and um, sadder things in minor, but actually Schubert turns these two modes around a lot because his point of view is really that he expresses in his major mode the happiness of other people, the unobtainable happiness of other people. Whilst the minor mode in Schubert is really something that he feels like is his life, it's like an old shoe. It might not be beautiful, but it fits, and he has kind of resigned into that. Now, you might ask, how do I know all of that? You see, Franz Schubert set many songs to music, and he picked poetry, and every time there is a turn, you can tell how the colors work with the text. For example, 
a gorgeous song cycle called Die Winterreise, a winter's journey, where Schubert depicts a single wanderer, as he calls him, the protagonist walking through a little village. And there he looks through the window panes of the families at dinner, sitting together, comfortable, enjoying each other's company in the warmth. Well, here he is all by himself outside, lonely and not really fitting. And you see, he sets the major for the family and the minor for himself. But the minor is quite happy, you will see. And it's the same thing in my piece. The minor mode is not necessarily, necessarily pardon me, so sad. And the major mode is rather contemplative. So let's have a listen together at Franz Schubert Klavierstück in E flat minor. And I hope you enjoy that mixing and matching of those two, the happy and the sad modes of classical music.
quite something, isn't it? That mixing of major and minor and playing with your emotions into all sorts of directions. Next on my program is a piece that is fresh off the press. It was actually written during the lockdown times. And the title of the piece is Clouds. So I imagine if you sit at home in the lockdown, wouldn't it be nice to be able to just float away and get away from all these problems we're surrounded with right now? It is too much what's going on. So take a moment, take a breather and go for a trip on clouds, if you will. The piece is written by South African composer James Wilding. It is, oh, I would say maybe six, eight weeks old, so fresh off the press. And I will actually use not only an iPad, but also my Turner pedal, which I will show you just now. This here is my Turner pedal, and actually the orange bit on it is where I press down and it'll actually magically turn over the page on my iPad, which is very nice for me because I have both hands at use all the time, so I wouldn't know how possibly to turn the pages otherwise. So let me get myself set up with my iPad and my Turner pedal, and then we'll take a little trip on cloud.
There was Clouds by South African composer James Wilding. Now, before I go on to my next set of pieces, I'm just going to quickly take that iPad back down and move the Turner pedal away. So I'll be right back. Next on the program are three preludes by French composer Claude Debussy. And I'd like to play them in a row and introduce you right off the bat to all three pieces. The first piece on the program uh, is called Feu d'artifice, which means fireworks. And these were fireworks during Claude Debussy's time, so not as splendid as they are now, but certainly as exciting to the people of the time. So you hear the crackling of the fire and some things going up in the air, and it's quite loud, as a matter of fact. But then, at the very end, it becomes quiet, and you'll hear this little tune. And this is a sliver of the French national anthem. This particular bit would be Aux Armes Citoyens. And this is the Marseillaise, a little tiny bit of it. The idea being here, the fireworks have burned down, and suddenly the wind carries to your ear a tiny bit of what maybe a band was playing all along. This kind of three-dimensional sound effect Debussy absolutely loves, and it happens in my third piece of my set as well. Number two is also a prelude by Claude Debussy. It is called Voile, and Voile can mean both sails or veils. Let me just for now go with sails. What do you have to imagine for Voile? You see, Debussy sets this in a novel scale. So he picks a completely different vocabulary for this piece. And the scale is a whole tone scale, which sounds something like this. Now you see our Western scale is a mix of minor and major steps of smaller and bigger steps. And with that, we always know where home base is. But this, as the name says, is a whole tone scale. So it's all whole tones on our keys here. And with that, we have no idea where we are. So it's sort of free floating that way. This piece is written like a Picasso painting would be painted, sharply edged and very abstract in that whole tone scale system. Another thing I'd like to point to you is these low notes, which Debussy uses throughout to depict the ocean depth. So here are the sails in the middle of the piece, in the middle range, that low ocean, and then on top a scintillating light, maybe just a bright sky or maybe the sun itself. So that's Voile, the second piece. And the third one is called Ce qu'a vu le vent de l'ouest, which means what the west wind saw. Now, that's a prelude as well. What the West Wind saw, what a funny title, isn't it? Because if you look at the map of France, you will see that on the west, I always have to say on the left, I, I, so to the left on the map, there's really just the open ocean. That's the Atlantic Ocean right there. So if we are listening to what the West Wind saw, doesn't that mean stories that were happening on the open ocean? And that's exactly what I think it is. So these are battles, these are refugees, these are people who tried to make it to America. Some made it, others didn't. So there is a lot of pain and suffering and tumult in this piece. And at the end, much like in Feu d'Artifice, again, when all the waves have settled down and we have a moment to think, Debussy brings to our ears the strumming or drumming of sounds, maybe somebody playing music on a ship very far away and we hear it over the ocean there. So those are the three preludes by Claude Debussy I'd like to share with you tonight. The first one is called Feu d'Artifice, which means fireworks. Number two is Voile, sails, those sharply edged sails. And then the last one is Ce qu'a vu le vent de l'ouest, which means what the west wind saw. I hope you enjoy.
Those were the three pieces by Claude Debussy, that last one with the open ocean, isn't it chilling? And then fireworks with that little uh, national anthem and then this stark one in the middle there, quite something. Now our journey through music tonight goes into a completely different part of the world, but not so far away time-wise. My next composer is gonna be Leos Janacek, a Czech composer, and um, the piece that I selected for you is called Ein Favetes Blatt, A Blown Away Leaf. This is from a selection that is called uh, On an Overgrown Path, and it's a fantastic set of pieces dealing with nature and emotions. Now, Janacek's music is used frequently as a um, background movie score, if you will, for movies that are set in, in Prague. So um, my imagination goes this way. I'm hearing the title, A Blown Away Leaf, and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe it's somebody walking through the city of Prague, and coincidentally, there's a leaf that sort of blows in front of the person, and he sort of follows the path of this leaf. And with that, he goes into corners of the city he would have never discovered. So here it is. A blown away leaf by Leo Janacek from the cycle on an overgrown path. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
There was Leos Janacek, A Blown Away Leaf. I guess it's not about a leaf, is it? <laughs> well, we're moving along and we're taking it yet into a completely different corner of the world, but again, our time travel is not that far. We're going to America. My next composer is the American composer Charles Griffiths. Now, Charles Griffiths is a turn-of-the-century man living in Manhattan, a well-to-do chap who actually um, frequented the underworld quite a bit. I'm thinking maybe some opium locales and these kind of roaring 20s kind of things. And he has a good output of repertoire, except it is not played at all except for one piece that quite a lot of people know, and it's called The White Peacock. Beautiful piece. Now, I thought, let me see if I find something by Charles Griffiths that sort of, um, I don't know, interests me and that I find quite exciting, and I found a piece that's called The Night Winds. The Night Winds by Charles Griffiths is based on a poem by Edgar Allan Poe. Needless to say, it's gruesome, the poem is because Edgar Allan Poe just likes that sort of stuff. He writes a poem where he depicts the night as if it's somebody throwing a black paw, as he calls it, a black piece of cloth over a landscape. So here comes nightfall, and the protagonist watches this happening and looks at a lake. And as night falls and the lake turns black, it turns gruesome. Now Griffiths sets this beautifully. Quite gives me the goosebumps to listen to this rather gruesome piece. Um, and you will hear it is in the same key as my very first piece in E flat minor. For those of you who know about key areas, that is a very remote key area. So here it is, The Night Winds by American turn of the century composer Charles Griffiths.
Could you hear how he uses that E flat minor color to depict the gruesome darkness of the lake? Quite a discovery, I find. My next piece is also by an American composer. Now, this is George Crumb, who was born in 1929. And for this, I will actually need two glass tumblers. Not to worry, they're not filled with water. But I have to place those empty glasses right into the piano, and I actually also have to sing. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm actually, with my voice, going to imitate the Indian tambora, which is an Indian instrument. I listened to some YouTube videos to see how my voice could best imitate the tambora, but George Crumb gives very specific ideas on how to do it. He says to pronounce the different vowels that he notates, like French, as in vin or bon, so it's a nasal sound he asks the performer to make. So let me get myself set up. The piece is called Ghost Nocturne for the Druids of Stonehenge. And as I said, I will need those two glass tumblers. So let me get these, let myself get ready for this piece. And then I hope you enjoy this very experimental piece by George Crumb, the ghost nocturne for the Druids of Stonehenge. That was George Crumb. It was called The Ghost Nocturne for the Druids of Stonehenge for prepared piano, this is called. So two glass tumblers of this size, it's specified actually the size is, the human voice and a grand piano. So let me just quickly unprepare my piano again. 
and get myself ready and situated for my last piece on tonight's program already. Tonight's program will conclude with perhaps the most famous piece of the actual program lineup. It is Impromptu Fantasy by Frédéric Chopin. Now, Frédéric Chopin, like Franz Schubert, wrote a lot of piano music. And these two pieces, the book ends and the cornerstones of my program tonight, have a lot in common, actually. They have the same build, so there is an ABA, a middle section surrounded by two outer sections. And they also play with that major and minor, which um, I explained already for the Schubert. So this is of a set of four impromptus, as I said, maybe his most famous one, Opus Posthumus uh, number 66. I hope you enjoy Impromptu Fantasy, the last piece on tonight's program already by Frédéric Chopin.
That concludes my program from beautiful Silver Hall here in Cleveland, Ohio at the Mouse Performing Arts Center. It was my great pleasure to play some classical solo piano works of all sorts of necks of the wood and of different character for you. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again in one of my future shows. Good night. What a great show. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Very eerie being in here by myself listening to this <laughs> for a little I while. No, I had at least one audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We will see you again Sunday night, 8 p.m., right here at Silver Hall. Diana Chitester is going to be here live, 8 p.m. Sunday, case.edu slash malt center. We will see you then. Have a good night. <laughs>